Okay. So today, right? So just to explain what this live is about, as I said, it's I'm uh, aiming it towards women. This stuff can also apply to uh, men, to people who are on a transgender uh, scale somewhere, uh, or or. Um, but specifically, this is stuff I've found that comes up with my female clients, especially with my women's group that I do. Um, so you probably saw at the beginning that I'm talking about like balancing your hormones. And just in case anybody uh, is is wondering uh, about the perspective I'm coming from. So I mainly largely come from a Taoist perspective what I'm talking about. So there does come in some Western science. Of course, this is the world we live in. It's good to talk about it and apply it into our lives. But uh, when we look at Taoism, it's a very interesting, like ancient sort of technique of understanding what we can call like the energy field or the energy body. So we have the physical body, which is what we know and what we can all really see. But if you look into quantum physics, we can also see that actually, uh, we're made out of atoms, but most of atoms is actually space. And that space is basically where the energy body resides. So more of us is energy than actual physical matter in any case, but we're not really educated to understand it. So for example, we're taught emotions, ooh, repress them. Unless they're really nice when you're just feeling all happy and high vibes and so on, you know, but anything else, just push it down, pretend it's not there, deny that it exists, you know, which, uh, I mean, if we look in the society around us, we can see epidemics of mental illness, criminality, uh, physical health problems as well, which often relate to emotional uh, problems, emotional emotional repression, and so on. And, um, you know, I'm sure that we can all kind of understand how the model of just, you know, push it all down there, especially when it comes to anger, because we as women were really taught like the anger is like, really bad it's like really unfeminine it's really unacceptable whereas guys are generally being told don't show any emotions except you can be angry because angry is okay for a guy because then he's manly and he's macho and you know an alpha male and so on you know and this one most of all right is what comes up right as we as as women when we're repressing our anger when we're trying to be that good girl submissive feminine woman and so on and i'm totally into femininity by the way just not the femininity that society sells us and tells us that we're supposed to be applying now i just mentioned hormones and that wasn't just me coming off on a tangent because when we look at hormones there's a huge parallel between emotions and hormones you know we can have the love hormone the sexual hormones loads of different hormones that have a big powerful strong relationship with our uh uh yeah the the hormones and with the emotional body and when we look at things in Taoism you know you can look at Taoism you can look at Tantra you can look at ancient Egypt Egyptian alchemy you can look at so many of these different uh, different systems, including co stuff coming from European countries, American countries, and uh, they're all kind of got this understanding of this stuff that's going on within the body that we, you know, our modern culture has tried to push this understanding. And I, I think, you know, especially as women, there were centuries of war waged against us, you know, called the witch trials or whatever you want to call it, where this kind of knowledge was basically um, destroyed where people were murdered, you know, in large numbers for actually understanding about this energy and such a war, it's such a powerful thing, such a war has been, you know, put against it to this day, there's actually still people in specific women being uh, uh, persecuted for witchcraft and and you know um i mean many of us will find i was i was chatting to a friend of mine uh yesterday in fact uh who's saying he wants to find a kind of someone to do a kind of talking therapy with him but he's saying not a conventional psychologist because they're just going to call him completely insane and he's just an incredibly talented really lateral thinking guy and i suppose that now it's gone from being oh you're you're a witch to oh you're crazy let's put you in a mental hospital or, or something like that you know when you're often actually getting into your power basically so um i also want to say like part of what's coming out here is um a lot of posts i'm reading at the moment hey al so nice to see you 
So a lot of posts I'm reading at the moment are talking about this thing, polarity, right? And on the one hand, I totally believe in polarity. You know, I believe there's masculine energy, there's feminine energy. We all have some. I have my feminine, I have my masculine, you know, uh, I would say actually the guys I work with, even though they come more into their masculine, they also come more into their feminine. And I'd say the same for the for the women as well. Um, but a lot of these posts, and I think many women here will probably resonate with this and understand what I'm saying. A lot of these posts are kind of talking about femininity in a way where it's disempowering to us as women and also talking about masculinity in a way that's disempowering to men. I was literally seeing someone I quite have liked to follow over the years talking about basically, okay, <laughs> women who talk too much, oops, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if women, she's saying, you know, women who've been single for a long time, they talk too much or something like this, right? You know, and okay, I can definitely get the thing that when we're in a kind of trauma state, we can over talk or we can under talk. I get that, you know, but then saying this stuff and it's almost like the same, it was the same vibes I felt when I remember walking past this kind of like, salon that does all these you know injection procedures in in the face and so on and they're like offering this free consultation and I'm like oh my god if I go in there <laughs> by the time I leave I'll believe like I'll be believing like every feature on my face is wrong and I need dozens of surgeries to just look normal again and it's kind of like the same thing that you know when we genuinely and authentically get in touch with our femininity or our masculinity, it's a really beautiful thing. But if someone else is going, oh, you shouldn't be like this, you shouldn't be like that. And it's kind of, um, uh, you know, you end up just feeling so insecure about what you are. And you're like, oh, my God, am I doing this? Am I doing that? You know, um, I think that, you know, we need to remember like the goddesses of old. And I've got some beautiful pictures that I put on the, I'm sure you all saw this, the, where you signed up, you know, I had a picture of Aphrodite. If you look at some of the ancient goddesses of love, they were also warrioresses. Many of them were, were warrioresses, were, had a lot of weaponry. And, uh, you know, I think what was coming up for me when I was do, searching through those images to do this talk was basically, um, you know, when we want to be feminine and in our feminine we also need to be able to be safe in that space because if we're not feeling safe in our feminine we're going to just perhaps be doing these things like acting masculine that people are kind of criticizing us for so um it's definitely been like a long journey for me to come to the place where I've learned what I've learned for myself and where I'm also uh, basically, yeah, even here sitting here today giving this talk, I would say that even like inspirations that have come to me like in the last couple of months, you know, on top of like my my program, which has been going on for a while longer than that, you know, and as I keep continuously working on myself on the various levels and also working through with the clients, like it really like just keeps opening new kind of like Oh, there's a little doggy here yeah opening new little sort of corridors where I start seeing oh this oh this you know I mean one thing the 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 women's group that's just basically finished that I was working on uh working with you know and one thing that came up was um anger so we actually say in Chinese medicine so by the way my background is I've, I've done a degree in Chinese medicine so I do know like quite a bit about uh, Chinese medicine and that was actually how I got into Taoism. Gives me a really nice, like really deep understanding of what the Taoist practices are really about. But we talk about this thing, the five elements. We don't need to know too much about it, but you can watch my second video of F uh, Activate Your Eros if you wanna know a little bit more about how the five elements works and how it relates to different like, emotions inside of the body so each organ contains like a set of emotions essentially and the liver uh so basically the liver we call it in chinese medicine it's the general right so it basically works together in a team with the gallbladder and the gallbladder makes decisions and the liver puts uh the those decisions into into practice you know so for example you can see i if any of you know like i mean this 
is a is an example of specifically that I noticed in myself when I used to be a pot smoker and in other pot smokers I see is that there can be all these ideas and so on and they never get put into action because the liver doesn't actually have the power to put those things into action because uh, it's being sort of repressed by, by the use of the cannabis. But similar things can happen when we are repressing our anger, we also repress the energy in uh, our liver. Now the liver meridian goes from the toe on the foot and it rises up the body, rises up the inside of the leg, rises up inside of the groin and it comes up into the lower abdomen. And then it goes into the liver from the liver into the lung and then down into the hands. Um, now we actually say in Chinese medicine that the health of the liver will be shown in the erection of the man. So when a man has a very healthy, strong erection is because his liver energy is healthy. And you would find the same actually, uh, you know, with, uh, with women, with our sexual energy as well. There's a big relationship between uh, not having as a good connection with the sexual energy, not having sexual pleasure and sort of repressing this energy and pushing this energy down. And, um, I mean, specifically, it's quite interesting to notice because with this, uh, I did, actually did, did a degree in Chinese medicine. Uh, and oh, I'm going to read those comments in a moment. And we learn to like read people where they are in the elements, right? I know this sounds a bit weird, yeah, like, but I can kind of talk to people and more or less figure out like what's going on with their organs, even if they like lied to me about all the symptoms they're having from the way we speak and the way that we put ourselves across, even like uh, this actually shows up in coloring on the face and the color is not to, to do with whether you're a white person, a black person and so on. It's actually like there's certain like subtle sort of shades that can come up on anyone regardless of, of, of the racial background, um, as well as like tones of voice. If you're with them in person, there's actually certain smells that, that give you indications about the organs, which you wouldn't notice unless you've kind of been trained in it. But it was interesting to notice with the ladies, like, you know, I was definitely noticing what we would call in five elements, like liver stuff, you know, coming on, coming out of people, like certain expressions that were just, I, I would just say, you know, showing that there was a lot of like agitation or just uh, stuck, repressed energy going on in the liver and there's a point when you see the first thing I work with people on is we work around the emotions because the emotions are basically um they're in a sense they they are the easiest energy to get used to working with but also when we work with other forms of energy if we don't know how to work with the emotions it's likely we can end up like really sort of in trouble you know and it just kept coming up, like all this repressed anger. Now, the reason for me that it was really, really pertinent is I grew up with this kind of family, well, with this mom in specific that was always saying to me, look at you, look at you. you're such an angry child. You're, you're <laughs> you know, always trying to make me feel bad that I was angry, you know, always putting me down. When I just asserted myself a little bit, you know, always putting me down. I was then uh, going, I ended up coming into teenage and adult years, going from being like really kind of scared and not daring to put my boundaries to flying into rages and then back and forth between the two, got into adulthood in that place as well. And at some point um, in my twenties, when I'd already started like my spiritual journey, but wasn't so advanced on it. And I would say this was one of the major, major breakthrough points. Um, uh, I think, I, yeah, I must've already been familiar with, with Taoism and so on, but uh, at that point, but uh I was actually like hanging out with a friend and there was alcohol involved in the situation, but I kind of more or less, I almost got date raped by this guy, but it was one of these situations, which probably a lot of you can relate to where someone does something and you kind of freeze and you don't know what to do and you don't know what to say. And then, you know, and this is the thing, like I didn't say anything because I didn't have healthy boundaries at that point in my life. I didn't have the sense to assert myself. I didn't have the 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 confidence to assert myself because I was like feeling at that time that I just was uh um yeah like 
I shouldn't be asserting myself. It was what I'd been grown up, always being told I wasn't being good if I was, you know, asserting myself. So anyways, I mean, before this guy actually raped me, I did walk out of the room. It wasn't that he was actually going to use violence against me, but it was just, I think he was going to do whatever he could get away with, you know, kind of thing without thinking too much about what I, what I wanted, you know, and then, yeah, this was at my, my house. So uh, basically, yeah, then I, I fell asleep, like in another room, I think I woke up in the morning, and he was gone. Uh, and then and I was furious at that point, you know, 12 hours later, my anger, which should have been protecting me at that time, <laughs> kicked in. And I was, uh, Basically, yeah, I was furious and I messaged him and I said, what were you doing? Like, I wasn't into that at all, what you were doing. Like, I wasn't okay with it. And he was like, oh, really? I was so surprised. I mean, okay, right. He should have figured it out, but I should have said something as well, right? And I was getting, ang you know, I was just raging, like, you know, not screaming or something like that, but just inside myself, I was like so angry and I went on a walk, I went into nature, I was like meditating in into it, into what was going on. I was sitting under this tree, like for hours, I was going on like this deep meditation journey where I actually ended up like in some past life where I'd literally been like tortured to death in this dun dungeon, you know, and connecting with this like anger I'd actually experienced in this past life, you know. And I remember just being like, I need to find what's going on. I need to find the answer to this. I was just on this mega inward journey of just pure rage, which nobody would have known from looking at me, you know, what was going on. But I was just so connecting with the energy. And I remember I got back and I was still sitting there on the floor and I was meditating. And suddenly it just came to me like, you need to love your anger. You need to love your rage, you know, a bit like if you saw a kid screaming and you actually pick the kid up and hug them, you know, and I remember suddenly just giving this love and acceptance and having this kind of, it was like a kind of, I'll say it was like an explosion, but it was like a slow explosion. Like I think if you see an atomic bomb without the sound, you know, and it's just this slow moving out and it was like this energy just filled my whole body, but it wasn't like an energy of, of um, uh, uh, it was just a very powerful, beautiful, amazing, good energy. It wasn't anything like, you know, when people think of anger and when I first tell people get in touch with your anger or I've seen sometimes I've written on Facebook posts and people have kind of, you know, said, oh, you know, anger is not a good thing. And, and, and people immediately associate you've got if you're angry, you have to scream at someone else or you have to smash something up or, you know, that that's the expression of anger. But really, in a sense, that's like the expression of having a bad relationship with your anger, you know, because when you're actually connected in with your anger and you're really able to feel it, and it's this amazing, powerful force that's rising up like really strongly. But in Taoism, we don't say like, we don't want to lose the anger. So most people would say, go off on the top of the hill and scream it out. But we realize in Taoism, it's a really, really strong energy. And if we lose all this anger, we can end up really, really drained because it's a really powerful energy we've got got rid of. And what we want to do is we want to transform and we want to transmute that energy. So we want to take that amazing upward flow of energy. And just I would just say the most effective thing that I have found with anger is give it love and do something creative with it you know, and take that power that you feel and it, instead of trying to push it back down, which then causes this kind of upward, you know, movement. Uh, and then there's this, and then there's this, you know, and the anger and everything kind of like takes over. Oh yeah, let me just check into what all these comments coming in the chat or if I need to reply to any of them. Um, so, we say like every negative emotion has a gift and the, the gift of anger is creativity. But when we look at exactly what is anger from the Taoist perspective is, so the liver, it gives us the desire to create and achieve in this world and on the physical realm. So it's very much about the here and now in the physical world and about us 
achieving things yeah now if you look at the way i don't want to get too conspiratorial minded about this but if you look at the way we as women have been taught to repress our sexuality and repress our anger for so many centuries and now today you literally have a world where you know they say 70 percent of the wealth is owned by men but when it comes to billionaires i think three percent of billionaires are women um i think apparently five percent of ceos in the usa are women, despite the fact that companies run by women outperform in terms of profit, those run by men on average by about 10%. I think in Australia, it's about 10% of CEOs are women. Maybe in the UK, it's like a little bit more. You know, in the UK and Germany, it's probably a bit more, but still, it's, it's, uh, we're massively underrepresented in society. And, you know, when people talk about uh, women, uh, you know, Okay, but you know, okay, a friend of mine, he was saying to me, he was going, oh, you know, most women entrepreneurs I know, they're kind of like, just very cold towards men. And I'm like, yeah, I can see how you can get that, to be honest. Yeah, he was basically saying to me, oh, you're quite different from these others that I know. Um, but uh, I think it's a real challenge to actually be like, you know, in this world, doing our thing and being powerful as a woman without losing what is our femininity. And to get back to Master Chia, who is the inspiration behind all of this. Hey, Tijano, let's do an anger meditation in a moment. Feeling so much anger. How many times I stub my toes? I think my lines need work. <laughs> I don't know why, but voice is not coming. Uh, wow, I needed this. I guess people can hear me because I probably would have got loads of comments saying you couldn't, right? Okay. Um, so Master Chia talks about this thing about uh, Taoist astrology, right? Which is different from Vedic astrology, different from Western astrology. So different like understanding and kind of astrology. Excuse me. Let me just have some of my yogi women's tea. Knowledge is just a revelation of tomorrow within you. Beautiful. Yeah. So the Taoists are very interested in the North Star, okay? And this is important why we women need to step into our powers right now, yeah? Okay, so the North Star, does anybody know what is the name of the North Star? Can you type the name of the North Star into the chat if you know what it is? Okay. What was the name of the North Star 5,000 years ago? So it was a different North Star. We actually have three North Stars. And as the Earth is slowly rotating on this thing called the precession of the equinoxes, the North Star changes. Now in Taoist astrology, they talk about the last North Star, yeah, 5,000 years ago, it changed from uh, Thuba to, to Polaris, right? The Taoists call Thuba a yin or a feminine star. And the they call um, they call the north uh, the north star now Polaris. It's a masculine star. Now it's very interesting to see that at that time, around five thousand years ago, that was when the first patriarchal tribes started to appear and started to basically like invade Europe and the other countries. Um, read the Chalice and the Blade by Rianne Eisler if you want to know more about this. It's a really really interesting book. Um, but uh, it's really interesting also that all the a lot of the stone circles all went up around that time. So my personal theory and understanding of this, which is uh, uh, which is basically, um, uh, you know, what does it mean a yin star, a yang star? If we look in Taoism, we as women, our strength is energy. The masculine strength is in the physical right? This is why at some point the church and so on was getting so freaked out about women's power in the energy realm and calling us witches and so on, because it's a very, very powerful thing. And here still to this day, we hear these criticisms of women, like she seduced him, she used her feminine wiles, like all this kind of stuff, you know, to try to sort of like put down this power. But I believe even when you look at like ancient texts, it's talking about people living hundreds and hundreds of years. I just think the energy was way stronger in those days. Like they probably could even pick up like stones of like many, many tons, you know, and easily just lift them and carry them because the energy was completely different. 
And it seems that at the time that the stars changed and the energy was shifting, they put all those stone circles up around what seemed to be energy points, like acupuncture points in the earth to keep amplifying the energy. But obviously then as it died out and died out, people stopped seeing, uh, believing in magic anymore, you know, and stopped experiencing the magic because it was kind of dying out, right? Well, according to Master Chia now, we are actually switching from Polaris to Vega, you can even find some articles like by NASA about this. Um, apparently the shift started in the early eighties and uh, it's interesting, like that's the time, well, you had, uh, obviously you had Queen Elizabeth in England who was a leader for a very, very long time, you know, but that was a, the first really famous female leader I think was Thatcher maybe, right? You know, and people think, oh yeah, like she, at like a man, she was so masculine. Well, I mean, the energy was very different at that time than it is now. And I don't think she could have been in her feminine in that position and and held that position up. But as we see, like it, the time progressing and even like, you know, there's many countries, many more countries now having female leaders, not to say that because a woman is a leader is going to necessarily be better. You had some characters, even I would say, I would call... Uh, Jeremy Corbyn, a very yin character who obviously he had a big popularity in England, although that didn't uh, work out for him in, in the end, you know, um, but he was definitely representing like a very feminine energy there as well. And we're seeing the world changing and seeing like, you know, hopefully at least as the more feminine energy, which of course it can be embodied in the males as well as, as in us, as the, um, as the females, um, that we're not just wanting to act like men and do men's thing, you know, and compete with them on the level of trying to be a man, but that we want to go into places with our feminine energy and really be bringing this feminine energy in, which does require, sure, we need to be connected into that energy, but it also requires for sure, like healthy boundaries uh, and uh, um, healthy boundaries and basically uh, like a kind of like a determination, a drive, you know, and I'm in some groups like including like paid paid coaching groups and free coaching groups as well with like other female entrepreneurs, also ones with like male entrepreneurs. And it's really interesting because like, you know, uh, a lot of people will say, oh, these guys like us, they're just, you know, grown up with a gold spoon up their ass and so on and born into privilege and so on. But in reality, when you look at a lot of female entrepreneurs and yeah, maybe some of them may seem to have been born into privilege, but many not yet. I mean, there's many there that have actually been in the sex industry, literally been human trafficked that have been uh, victims of like domestic violence. Many women are finding when they're starting to come into their power and become entrepreneurs they can experience like violence from men violence from their partners and um, it's uh it's something like yeah like it's a real thing you know and one one thing like I learned about this and I think it was something I figured out before I even kind of got into like Taoism and before I even got into like figuring out and learning how to um uh uh how can I say it yeah how you know, stuff about mindset, I suppose, as well, was, you know, we can have really awful, horrible things happen to us, you know, we can have really, really abusive childhoods, and there was a point, like, you know, I went through, like, a lot of abuse as a child, like, huge amounts of trauma, I grew up actually in a cult, experienced a lot of physical and sexual abuse there, there was a point, I think, as a teenager, I was kind of, somehow picked up in my, I think by that time I'd already left home and left, you know, uh, left the cults, but I got picked up somewhere along the way and started getting sent to see psychologists. And I think I was really like this moody sort of, you know, traumatized, inarticulate person that couldn't really sort of talk about everything. And I remember at one point being sent to this like top, I don't know if she was a psychiatrist or psychologist or whatever in the area. And I remember her just basically condemning me as a completely hopeless case, you know, that was unresolvable, completely pointless to, to even try, you know, to, to help or whatever, you know, and I mean, as I said about my, my friend at the beginning, I think that when we're into certain levels of living outside of the conventions of society, 
people can like condemn us as being sort of, you know, crazy or, or various, you know, things or whatever, you know, and I honestly, I just found, I mean, I started actually my first business when I was 17 and that was, I needed to survive, you know, I was, I was, yeah, needing, needing basically to survive, you know, and I do remember like along the way, obviously like loads of amazing, really, really cool things happening, but also like very hurtful things happening, especially when it's from people that you don't, think it should be happening from or you don't expect it to be happening from um and I suppose when these things happen it's easy to kind of like go into a downward spiral or get depressed and I'm all for healing from this stuff I'm definitely all for you know doing the inner work and healing but I think like an important part of that is actually taking you know including it can be taking being like angry at someone that saw you doing well and try to mess things up for you or whatever you know which I'm sure everybody has experienced take that anger and just go do you know what I'm going to just be even better version of myself I'm going to do even better at what I'm doing because you know without otherwise what am I going to do just sit there and get depressed and smoke some pot or get some antidepressants or something like that you know which is some, something I've done in the in the past you know and we are incredibly, incredibly, incredibly creative beings. And the sexual repression of women was not just done because someone just thought, hey, let's just repress female sexuality, you know, one day. Um, when our sexuality is repressed, it really represses our creativity. Like if we look at the goddess, we look at like Aphrodite, for example, fertility, creativity, we create is our bodies that have this, you know, process of creating new life, essentially. And this is just an incredible, amazing, powerful thing. And obviously, as the Taoists knew, we're not probably getting pregnant every time we menstruate, you know, even if one had 10 kids here, which would be loads of kids here, imagine if I had 10 kids, I still would have had numerous, you know, hundreds of menstrual cycles in all likelihood. All that time, that energy is just coming, is being released, is maybe causing period problems and other kinds of imbalances with the hormones, as they call it, you know. But when we can actually tap into that energy, and start using it, first of all, using it to literally like regenerate our bodies at a cellular level, um, and then starting to put it into creativity. This is like a really super powerful thing. And this is like, um, in a sense, this is what all the Taoist practices are about, about um, removing the blockages and then tapping into this like juiciness here which yeah it's our sensuality but it's like so much more than what the sexuality that's projected onto us by you know we don't even need to look at the porn industry to see it you know we see it in netflix in in hollywood tv and so on like there's this very distorted idea of of female sexuality which is like extremely like disempowered you know as well it's not a powerful juiciness um, at all. And well, you know, I do find like, even when I like, for example, on the few occasions in my entire life, I will admit that I've watched and seen mainstream porn and my, my reaction is always just a bit like, mm, you know, I don't relate to this. I don't relate to these women. You know, it's very different from maybe some erotica or something that's a bit more real, you know? Um, and it's showing such a plastic idea of women that it's just not, I don't know, I guess to me it was like really lacking like any kind of a depth, you know, but showing us as such such a plastic portrayal of, of female sexuality that really wasn't showing like the whole experience, which includes connecting, flirting, seducing, feeling emotions, crying, laughing, you know, all the various different like pleasure spots as well that we have in each one of these actually connects with our organs and activates like a certain um, kind of uh, uh, an energy within the body and like has a healing process essentially. And this with the, the Taoist Jade practice is actually um, what it's all about, about actually unblocking this energy and moving it up into our system. 
uh, clearing out the the blockages in the vagina and then learning to basically circulate it and recycle it and start using it we call it like a superfood for the soul so it's like something that we can use for anything we can have like we can just turn it into anything that we want um anything where our intention is going now i saw the anger come up a minute ago let's do a little quick exercise around anger the chalice and the blade i definitely recommend uh getting yeah polaris coming up right okay so i want to do an exercise around anger and i'm going to ask uh people watching both on facebook and if you're live here uh we're going to do an exercise but if you're feeling like it's uh um uh, a little uh, too much. Don't worry, you don't need to do it. Okay, so let's start off. Okay, and we're going to do the most simple Tao practice, which is directing attention and cultivating energy. Okay, so placing your hands over your heart, shutting your eyes, and as you shut your eyelids, you can notice that the eyelids are shut, but the eyes can still see, and what you're seeing now is the back of your eyelids. And so let's turn the inner gaze in, looking inside, looking into the brain, into the head, down the neck, down the throat, into the chest, and the heart and we're going to connect into the heart and we're going to smile to our heart and we're going to send unconditional love and acceptance into our heart and of course we can love our attributes that we think are amazing and sexy and everybody loves but let's also send love to our quirkiness our weirdness our saggy boobs the belly that might not just look quite perfect like the woman on the ad or whatever it is the part body parts that we're feeling aren't you know doing what we're told that they should be doing Send love into your yoni, into your labia, your clitoris, the yoni entrance, the internal vagina, the G-spot, the cervix. And smile, sending love into your cervix. and connecting with the energy there. And you can just become aware as you're doing this, that there's an energy meridian that travels from your cervix into your uterus and all the way up into your heart. And you can smile now into your heart, feeling that connection. And that activation from your cervix going up into your heart. And just opening your eyes, come into the room and just feel that beautiful, gorgeous feeling of self-love inside of you. And you can just move a little bit, just really feeling like in total perfection with your body, with who you are, sending love to your wrinkles, to your gray hairs, if you've got any wisdom hairs yet. Sending love into your belly, to your legs, your thighs, your calves, your feet. your shoulders, your muscles, your arms, your hands, your neck, your head. Just smiling to yourself and just realizing how perfect 
you are And feeling, really feeling that energy of love within your being. Radiating through you and being aware that all love is self-love and that all love is unconditional. And that it's an energy that radiates through your being and it burns away any toxicities, anything that doesn't belong inside you. So while you're tuned in to this feeling of love, just be aware if there's anything inside you that feels, uh, it feels a little blocked, a little heavy. And just smile, sending love to that feeling as well. And just giving it permission to relax, let go, and release. Mm -hmm. And now opening your eyes, I want to invite you to, we're going to connect with a different energy. We're going to connect with the energy of anger. So I'm inviting you to do this. If you don't feel to do it, you're absolutely welcome to just observe. Try it at a later date. The video recording will be available on YouTube. It'll be emailed to you. It will also be there in the group. Okay. And it's very interesting that when people say, I don't feel any ang anger, it's often that there's actually the most repressed, bottled up anger feeling. Now, what we think of as anger, in the Taoist understanding, there's a lot more to it. So it might be, for example, if we repress the anger energy, it, this can often show up as resentment, as jealousy, as uh, passive aggression, uh, or it can just show up as like not having any healthy boundaries. Um, now, by the way, in Taoism, we don't say like that negative emotions are bad and positive are good. Everything's important. It's all a matter of balance, as we can probably see right here. Okay. So we're going to do this exercise and just do it within the range of your comfort. And just now, shutting your eyes again, if you feel to do this and you want to join into the exercise, I invite you to connect with something that, try to connect with the feeling of anger. So I know some people had to practice this a bit to get it. If there's a specific thing that you feel angry about, just keeping embodied with this loving energy, connect into this anger feeling. And smile to the anger, also sending love to the anger. And if you connect with the energy of anger, you can notice it has a strong upward movement. And when you change your, your perspective of looking at it so that you stop looking at it as something that's bad and inherently dangerous and that makes you a bad person and that just shouldn't be there and you just observe it in a neutral way and feel it welling up you can actually feel that as a very powerful and revitalizing energy inside of you an energy that can be transformed so it's like it's giving us energy it's giving us a kind of a vitality it's giving us a drive and a push which is very natural. And now holding on to that energy, both the love and the anger together. I invite you to now connect with something you wish to create. 
So something you're working on, a project you have, an idea you have, however big or small that is. And now applying to that project, and this will work really well if it's a project you're feeling a bit stuck on. Put the love and the project into the stream of anger and allow it to rise up and fill your body. And observe what you feel inside your being. I find that continuing to smile as we're doing this can be really helpful. And then just move a little bit. So you're kind of moving these energies around inside you. Observing what's going on and then come back to your heart. And then just move a little bit. So you're kind of moving these energies around inside you. And really notice how it feels to give the, the feeling of anger, like a real hug and a real loving feeling as if you're kind of um, giving love to your inner child. And this is different. The feeling of anger is very different from what might be called the inner tyrant. So it more actually relates to the inner child, because if you see a child like having a tantrum and they're crying or sometimes we cry and the crying normally actually comes from some kind of anger or frustration. We say in Chinese medicine, the tears are actually the secretion of the element of, uh, of uh, wood, which is that they come from anger, basically. Um, so uh, yeah, the inner tyrant, by the way, it's more like to do with the self-sabotage and the part of ourselves, it's probably the part of ourselves that's actually telling us we need to uh, <coughs> we need to push the anger down and repress it because the inner tyrant comes from programming, whereas anger is something that naturally resides within the body. So I know this is like a really powerful exercise and that also it can sometimes be one of these things that practice makes perfect, but I'm really interested if anybody has uh, any observations about this, any questions about it, if you wanna put something in the chat or you wanna ask something verbally. Yeah, if you have a weak liver, I think that working with your anger is really, really an important thing to do. And uh, I was just checking there what I had actually said was going to be on tonight here yeah, because it's so hard to know, right? So when we smile into the heart and we grow this love in the heart, this is actually uh, the most powerful way to fall in love with ourselves right by by uh Tijana we're going to start working on this and I'm going to even get you a buddy okay uh let's chat in Facebook messenger because I know you're in my membership and you're starting to do the the lessons right so you're going to start learning really quickly about how to do this so someone put there it's not easy Uh, I don't know if anybody who put a comment here would like to speak. Courtney, I can feel a lot of energy flowing through me. My heartbeat is stronger right now. And my third eye is tingling a lot. It really, really interesting, isn't it? Because there's a really close connection between what's going on with our anger 
and what's going on with our sexual energy. And I think this is why, especially like childhood trauma, childhood sexual abuse, it leaves all, leaves all this rage and anger inside of people really like affects the sexual energy really badly even when there's not ne necessarily been sexual abuse but the physical abuse it can affect the sexual energy although obviously just sexual repression affects the sexual energy as well channeling the anger is difficult in a sense the anger channels itself you know but uh don't worry anger seems to connect to will justice and what you are standing for as it moves through into purpose definitely 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 and we're taught you know this is bad and you know sexual energy is bad so the same people who told us that anger is bad you know and these are very very powerful things that make us really powerful as people and I have to say that I notice with clients that actually as I get them to get more in touch with their anger they become way more calm yeah and also less depressed because when we're repressing the anger depression is a really like obvious result like everything's just a bit because it's not you know the energy isn't rising up well, lots of energy came through my whole body and it finally came up past my heart through my throat and third eye and crown didn't realize how much that was stopping energy from coming all the way up exactly because all these like we can say like trauma repressed emotion subdued emotion uh basically uh but what we're looking at is when we look more deeply, we're looking at programming, we're looking at morality, we're looking at societal norms, we're talking about looking at how we were told to be the good girl so that a man is going to love us and accept us when in reality, maybe the guy wants us to have a little bit more stuff going on. And I mean, even when you look at like the guy that he gets the nice, lovely perfect wife right and then he goes off and cheats on her with the bad girl because he wants his wife we all have so many multiple aspects of ourselves and he wants to see the bad girl coming out in his wife just as he wants to see the good girl and when we're not giving the guy all these different aspects it's like on some level uh on some level we're not giving him everything that we can you know um I personally, I know people have said this and disagreed with me about it. Loads of my friends disagree. I personally love Nicki Minaj. Yeah. I think she shows this like really sexy girl and then she's got this attitude and then she's like really rude and then she's really sexy. And I love the way she kind of embodies these different, you know, aspects, but I know that she's not to everybody's taste, which is completely fine. But I think that there's other, other people out there that, embody this like in a public way but I just found her I think also I'm quite drawn to Caribbean style music as well which was probably part of it but yeah so just to read on a few of these lots of energy through my whole body it finally came up oh yeah no no we did that we did that uh sorry next one I really appreciate this master class it's giving me an incredible perspective on my own shadow work practice and my practice I have with my clients thank you you're welcome my pleasure by the way guys can i just mention did you all receive an email inviting you to take part take part in a giveaway i've got free stuff that every single person is going to get given right uh you need to you should have received an email explaining to telling you to write to me uh at a certain email address i'm putting in here Uh, I'm just putting it there. And basically just to explain uh, where you're coming from, what you got out of this masterclass and where you're going. It doesn't need to be an epic essay. A few sentences or paragraphs is 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 great. Uh, so, uh, oh, Courtney, another Nikki fan. Yeah, I find just, do you know what? Yeah, I put it on the Bluetooth speaker, which is Undrop, unbreakable, unsmashable, waterproof completely. And I go in the shower with Nicki Minaj playing <laughs> on the, um, uh, on the, you know, yeah, I just love her energy, like compared to other, uh, uh, so many of the other pop stars around. I just love the fact, and she's become really, really big. And yet she's not showing this kind of, you know, kind of, you know, so, female energy that we see some women they're just like you know it's too I don't know yeah like uh um uh it's just toxic feminine or just yeah femininity that I think just doesn't show all of what we're about the fact that we 
are priestesses, we are goddesses, we are warrioresses, you know, we are so many of these things and we are incredibly powerful. And there's no way any of us would be sitting here if our ancestors had been a stereotype of some feminine, whatever that, whether it's Hollywood or some polarity coach trying to push this onto us. Yeah. Like these women like gave birth in fields, you know, they like carried us. Yeah. They carried our ancestors. They, they fought, you know, they killed, they, they, they're now finding like literally like uh, bodies buried of women with all like, weapons and everything so there was many warrioresses obviously we can look like in England which is my where I was born uh that uh when the Romans invaded actually the main person that stood up to the Romans was actually a woman who got together uh um uh large armies and burnt a lot of Roman cities down to get revenge on the Romans because they raped her daughters for example you know when something a little bit less known but when the armies of the the Islamic con conquest reached the Berber kingdom in western North Africa which would be Morocco Algeria Libya and so on there were a lot of kind of separate Berber kingdoms without a kind of central defense and actually a woman organized all these armies together and held off the invaders for about five years basically and eventually managed to uh um uh negotiate a kind of agreement where her sons converted to islam but then became the leaders and and her sons and their descendants are to this day the leaders in morocco you know and there's many many stories about women as warrioresses and this isn't like something we shouldn't be shamed for standing in our power um but when we do this and we're really, really connected in with our femininity, it's so much more powerful than when we do it where we're just in the masculinity. So brought anger into a much more balanced and productive way of managing my own energy. Is that from today or it's in the future? Uh, sorry, it's in the past. So is it helpful to let anger out through screaming and tantrums, bashing into pillows, etc.? Or is there a better way? Great question, right? Yeah. Now, in Taoism, we don't want to lose the energy because if you're doing Tao practice, we want to be increasing our energy all the time, cultivating energy. This is what Taoism is all about. You know, if we take our traumas, right? And this can happen to people that if you start removing your traumas, you can end up really, really drained, right? If you transform your traumas, you're not losing that big chunk of energy. You're putting it into flow and into use inside of your body. So, I mean, I remember being in this place where they were trying to get everyone screaming into pillows and I'm like, this is not very Taoist. I don't want to do it. You know, <laughs> eventually I tried it once or twice. Okay. All right. I kind of got what it was about, you know, but I prefer to you to do the Taoist transformation, use the Taoist sound, you know, um so uh yeah no idea about the meridian the meridian was uh basically uh it's called the chong mai so uh watch the woman king movie thank you thank you thank you thank you okay so let's just add one little piece more to the puzzle uh before uh i'm going to uh, draw to a, an, a close with any kind of questions so about the falling in love with ourselves and we can smile and when we start to smile to our various different organs so we talk about like there being 12 organs in in Chinese medicine so we can smile to the liver to the lungs we can smile to any kind of body part great to, to smile into the the vagina the labia the G spot for the males, the prostate and the penis and so on. Um, this is something that can be done anywhere, but through this smiling and the cultivating of energy, we're really growing this energy inside of our bodies. And uh, through this, when we're growing this loving energy inside of the bodies, it's literally the most powerful way, along with, of course, going inside, going into our bodies. And for people, I know some people here are on my program. Some people I've spoke to already know about my program. Some of you maybe don't know about my program. Um, basically, 
it's a journey of like going into the body and working with this energy. So yeah, there, there are there are sounds that we use at, at some point during the fourth week, we start using actually sounds to start to transform the emotions. Uh, but when we start going in there and we start to really create and cultivate like not just the energy, but on like a deeper, more spiritual level, this relationship with ourselves and really with our body, with our organs, seeing that the organs are actually there as like a really important part of like, almost like our spiritual journey or our self-development journey or whatever word you want to use around that, you know, it's really like by having this presence within our being, within our body, we say in the Taoism, like empty mind, yeah, full belly. And I did this like amazing, amazing breathing, uh, uh, workshop I guess yesterday with this guy that was just so next level like Taoist teacher it was absolutely incredible in fact I'm gonna some of you here I'm gonna teach it to you in a lesson it was like but I need to just make sure I've got my head around it first here yeah, and that I'm doing it right before I pass it on but this amazing way to uh to basically be actually um uh cultivating energy within their own body so beautiful like connecting in with our anger is an amazing thing yeah but let's not forget you know and I know the word is controversial I keep saying pussy people keep complaining I'm saying pussy people want to say yoni I'm like yeah but that reminds me of all the creepy tantra guys and then like other people want to say vagina and I'm like yeah but that's all gynecological and then someone makes up a new word for it and that it just sounds weird as well um so I mean what what's what I like about pussy is that there's these uh Taoist nuns which are called white tigresses and let's be honest a tigress is a cat it is a kind of a pussy right and they do this energy cultivation uh pro processes which I there's definitely like a lot in common with uh what I teach definitely like in the second module of my program so uh um uh yeah, I feel like I even have like a kind of like stuffed pet white tigress thing, not a real one, but, you know, to just kind of tap into that energy. And so, you know, like in Taoism, we do all kinds of complicated stuff with meditating with uh, various parts of the vagina, using different sounds as we're meditating through different parts of the vagina, different visualizations, certain massages on the breast, the ovaries, certain number in one direction, certain number in another, so on and so forth. It gets very complex, but there's a reason for it all. And it does do really powerful stuff. Oh, I see a little cute doggy there. I think I got to bring a little cute doggy on now as well. Look, spices. There's a little doggy over there. <laughs> There's a little doggy. Okay, sorry. So, um, yeah. So, anyways, right? Let's not overcomplicate things because, by the way, before I do teach, the way I teach this stuff, and some of you will know this, some of you will uh, um, be about to learn it. Some of you, hopefully, most of you will be learning this in the future. Let's see. You know. But it's an intricate set of exercises where we go from one step to the next step to the next step to the next step. And you can't really jump in on week eight or nine or something and suddenly do it uh, because you need to do what we call the preliminaries are really, really super important, basically. Um, so we're not going to go into this complex of, I mean, in fact, these exercises are really powerful that if you do them in the wrong way, they can actually mess you up, basically, you know, which just goes to show how powerful they are, because, uh, you know, if something can't hurt you, it's also not very powerful as well, you know, um, but anyways, let's just talk about like a nice, simple exercise to just get in touch with our juicy sexual energy, which is the feeling of horniness that we all get, you know, uh, in our in our vaginas, in our pussies, our yonis, whatever word you want to sort of place there and, and use to fill in the gap, you know. And sometimes it can be like connecting into that energy. It can be a little bit tough because sometimes it can just come up when we didn't expect it. Then when we want it, it's not there because we're not, connected in with it and in Taoism I mean part of the process of Taoism is interesting like as I've gone through this Tao journey I've been learning that 
everything we're doing is like really, really connected into modern science. I mean, I don't want to turn it into a whole science class and make it like really boring for people. But in I've realized in my program is actually quite important to do like definitely some teaching around things like the autonomic nervous system and the vagus nerve, which is kind of what is governing the sexuality, but even more to do with that. When we think about the process that would cause just a man to get an erection or a woman's vagina to, to open and become lubricated and ready, ready for sex. And there's actually a whole different cascade of kind of interactions going on on the subcon subconscious level within the body before we do that. So many men are finding they're having problems with their erections. Women are finding that they're having problems with experiencing the lubrication that they want because we're disconnected from uh, basically being able to connect into those um to be able to like connect into those um energies and actually make that all work properly i mean for example like one thing i have a big criticism of like the lube industry i think that one thing is like it encourages like people to have sex way before the woman is like ready the, the way before the vagina is ready it causes people to be like sloppy with poor play, poor play, of course, including like seduction, talking. It's not just about like touching someone's vagina or something, you know, with your finger basically. But uh, um, when do we want to connect into this energy? Oh yeah, as I said, so when 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 we start working with the, the sexual energy, what women are finding is they're finding very natural lubrication going on. I definitely had big problems with my natural lubrication before. I've never really had a problem with it since. Um, the guys saying the same thing that they're just finding the erections are stronger than they've been for like 10 years, but just completely feeling like in control of it, not being pulled along by urges that they're not in control of, but rather with this nice like embodied masculine energy, strong masculine sexual energy and erection, um, but uh, not, uh, yeah, not in a way that's kind of out of control or maybe like over, over, over sexual, because obviously there's a nice comfortable sexual energy. And then there's the sexual energy just like going a little bit over the top where it becomes frustrating, it becomes annoying, it's getting in the way, which is a form of blocked energy, just like not feeling the blocked energy. So let's go into like a little exercise to just connect in with these juicinesses. Okay, so shutting our eyes and again let's do what we did before turning the gaze inward into the brain down the throat into the chest into the heart and let's smile into our heart just giving absolutely pure unconditional love into every aspect of ourselves everything we feel everything about us and really feeling this as a red light with, with the red light of the fire element. So feeling like we're actually igniting and blowing on embers or a fire inside the heart. Feeling this warming. And then let us move our attention down and bring our attention down through the center of the body from the heart, down through the stomach and intestines and down into our wombs. And connect into your womb now, feeling that red loving energy is searing down into your womb, filling your womb with loving red energy, which then spreads out into your ovaries and down into your cervix and smile to your cervix as if you're almost feeling this kind of red fiery energy in the cervix just like a glowing ember going down into your vagina which is you can notice containing a different energy the orgasmic energy which is the energy of the element of water and the kidneys. And it's a blue energy. Now, when sexual energy is very cold, as we know and can probably imagine, it's shut down and it's not moving. 
Oh, and for the people here who are not owners of uh, physical vaginas and uteruses, please note that everybody actually has an energetic one. So you can do this exercise exactly as I am describing here. And now tuning down into your vagina, I invite you to try to connect with your G-spot. See if you can, if you can't connect with your G-spot, don't worry. Just smile and send love into the inside. Really filling the whole inside of your luscious, magical, incredible cave that's at the doorway to life and filling it with love and beautiful energy. And if it feels comfortable to you to do this, you may place your hands, a hand just gently over your outer labia, between your legs, perhaps with your palm by your clitoris. And very gently and comfortably, relaxedly, placing your hand there for a feeling of physical connection, of security, comfort, and warmth. And also as a kind of way of stopping the energy from coming out and down your legs, but keeping it there. and keeping the energy inside. And now just connecting in to the muscles at the entrance to the yoni. I wanna invite you to ever so, so gently squeeze but I'm talking about do the most gentle possible squeeze. So it's almost like you're just doing it with your imagination. Just a little squeeze and a release. You can almost imagine a little butterfly type gentle movement, a little fish's mouth moving slowly and gently. And what you're doing is you're just connecting into the energy and using the ever so gentle movement of your muscle just to help you focus into the energy. So you're starting to feel this buildup of blue orgasmic energy. And as you're doing this, just make sure that you're keeping relaxed, that your belly is rising and falling as you breathe. And now as you inhale, you can start to invite that blue energy to travel up the meridian, up the center of your body, through your cervix and into your heart. And you can exhale, allowing the loving energy to travel down into your yoni.
And you can notice as you're spending your attention and spending this time connecting into your yoni, connecting with the blue energy, connecting into what we call in Taoism the Jing energy, which is like the DNA, the energy that we're made from, that actually literally connects us into all of our ancestors. through our DNA. And you can just visualize now that you're sitting in a cave, that your yoni is a cave, but you're literally sitting inside this cave and that you're surrounded by old women who are all telling stories around you. And they're imparting to you wisdom and knowledge. And this is the wisdom and knowledge that you have inside of your body, in your DNA, in your Jing energy. This inside you waiting to be activated. And this is why sometimes you'll just find little, we can call them downloads, and people think of them as kind of coming from the universe. Not to say that they don't also, but a lot of the downloads are literally there in the DNA and they're actually inside of our bodies. And when we look into our bodies for inspiration instead of looking up into the universe it's like we're actually tapping into these gifts that are already there given to us and of course we can know how when we feel when we feel this energy when we feel this sexual energy we have a lovely feeling an inspired feeling, a beautiful feeling. And this is the energy that we can learn to tap into. For myself personally, I didn't find anything more effective than going through the Tao practices of also learning to actually go from having never even had an orgasm to becoming multiple orgasmic by actually learning to just tap into what was already inside of me and release these release these blockages and that when we the more that we start to connect into this energy the more that we can find ourselves armed with an energy that's going to give us the resources that we need, that you need as an individual for whatever your creative project, your, your purpose, your goal, your drive is. And the sexual energy is amazing, but the liver is really the right-hand man to this energy that really allows this energy to actually manifest in the physical world as what we are here to create. Because as much as we love to feel like we're spiritual beings, we are spiritual beings in physical bodies, having a physical experience in the physical world. And these things that we've been taught to perhaps have a negative relationship with including the sexuality but especially the negative emotions these are actually gifts and everything we have everything we have been given these are all gifts and it's like a puzzle that we can slowly start to unlock and figure out step by step and I think as Master Chia says, you know, the answers are all in there. They're all inside us. It's a matter of going back into our original programming where we can actually figure out how to find these answers.
So I invite you to just slowly move your body and allow this energy to integrate. Allow your body to do what it wants to do with the energy. You can just focus yourself into your belly. So I'm not even talking here about the womb, but just the whole belly area below the navel. And just put your attention there to store the energy because when our energy is stored nice and low inside of our belly, we are very nice and grounded. And this is like a beautiful place to come from because a lot of the weaknesses we as women have is that, you know, one of the big criticisms of women is women are emotional beings. Emotions are a really, really powerful thing when we know how to work with them, you know? But they can also be a big source of a loss of energy and a loss of personal power. And especially when we get into the place where we're all being kind of like up in our head about things, instead of just being in our bodies about them. Um, so as women, we actually absorb the energy from the outside, whereas the men will be putting the energy out into the world. One is centrifugal, one is centripetal. I can't remember which way around it is. Um, but that's why it's really important that we make sure we get topped up by being around nature and especially actually trees, plants and so on. This is all the wood element. And this wood element is basically uh, um, really, really good to be around in order to keep the whole like internal system uh, healthy and the whole process of what the liver is doing for us by putting our plans and our dreams in the physical world here into action. So if anyone has any questions about these, and I just noticed there's some questions, I'm not sure who they're coming from. So yes, absolutely. So I do teach in my program about the parasympathetic nervous system, in fact, about the whole autonomic nervous system. I teach about the vagus nerve, uh, I also, uh, we do go a little bit into the science of it. For example, I did a masterclass about the vagus nerve, which I know that it's available in my membership program. I'm not sure where else it's available. I also um, uh, know that it's, uh, yeah, obviously it's something I go into in the program as well. So, um, uh yeah, it's like my own way of, I guess, like looking over some studies, looking over some research and then uh, finding uh, finding the research and my experience both, both with my own body, with working with Taoism and other modalities, basically, to um, be able to uh, then uh, um, uh sort of yeah like what I understood but I would just say is as I worked with Taoism more and more and as I researched and looked more into the vagus nerve and the autonomic nervous system which Mantichia talks about these things anyways the more I started seeing oh wow the Taoists are really working with the autonomic nervous system and the vagus nerve like this is really really interesting actually so um yeah it's all interconnected definitely you know so I want to offer a space now for anyone who has any questions about this. And I also want to say that this here is all part of a bigger program. It's like a four month container, right? I am going to say I'm about to start one next week. I still have a couple of places for ladies. The men are well overcrowded, but I have a few places left for ladies. I know some people here have already signed up. If you're interested in that, uh, I'm just putting right here now into the chat a link to my Calendly. If you want to talk to me about this, you're interested in getting onto the program, do please uh, click the Calendly link and open it. And you can book to have like a 15 minute consultation. We can see if this would be suitable for you or not. And then if we're both feeling it could be suitable, I can then explain to you what the program, how the program works, if that's what you wanna know. So, uh, um, but it's just a 15 minute chat where we can kind of go over what's going on. Um, I have that program, by the way, I do have some other, uh, I have various levels of program. I'll just say as well, um, 
that I have a teacher training program that I'm even doing now, which is like a whole year, but the four months, which is like, I mean, the four months is like everything you almost could possibly learn about this stuff with about five years of then practicing afterwards. There's even the membership as well. And some of the levels of the membership, you can still even come into the group coaching calls. You can even come to like week, weekly group coaching calls, as well as basically start even to uh, go through like some of my content that's in my program, but just on like a lower investment, basically. So there, there is a masterclass next week. I'm not even sure if I put it out because my Instagram has basically got uh, uh yeah, I put this beautiful little reel about the penis cock power, cock worship, if anyone saw that, and it's been removed. And I'm now in penalty on my Instagram. The Instagram's still there, but nobody's seeing my post really. So I'm kind of feeling like I need to just come off of it for like a week. But next week on the 19th, I do have a masterclass coming up. It's a paid masterclass. We're going to be going into genital reflexology. This is for Valentine's Day. And we're going to be going into genital reflexology and how you can use genital reflexology for with your partner as a kind of like Valentine's Day fun thing or whatever we want to call it. Um, so let me see if I have this link here for the Valentine, so I can share that. Yeah, here. Yeah. Hang on. Let's see if I can find it here, actually. Um. Oh, yeah, here it is. The genital reflexology for couples. So this is like teaching how to use it. By the way, if you are in my membership, this is 72 pounds to join this, okay? But if you're in my membership and you can get into my membership starting from only 36 pounds, you can basically get this for free, okay? So I definitely recommend, don't wait till the last minute to join five minutes before I'm studying the masterclass to join the membership where you might miss getting the link because it takes about 24 hours for my assistant to make sure you're you've got uh into the correct groups where you can find the links and so on um so that's that link there as well so um yeah the membership is really cool like on some of them you can you can join into these like weekly coaching sessions um I, do, I am going to keep doing like lives on Facebook. I think I'm going to ha be having like a couple of really, really cool guests coming up soon. I have this like, it's actually a guy that started off as my client and is now a friend who's a top uh, psychologist, but he's ended up deciding that he was a psychiatrist for the NHS for years and he ended up deciding it's all a load of rubbish and basically getting into Tantra. And so I'm going to be doing a live. He's actually 80 years old, but he's very healthy. Okay, here's the link for the membership as well. Um, so you can check out the membership. So if you go have a look, because there's three different levels and it shows you what exactly you're getting on the different levels, right? Uh, because uh, basically some of them include some coaching calls, some of them some of them uh, don't, one of them doesn't and two of them do basically. So, um, but with each, even if you join the membership, for example, you'll get uh, at least two lessons, two other classes per month here. Yeah? Plus you'll get uh, that masterclass as well. Uh, so you're getting way, way more anyways out of it. Even if you just join the one that's 36 pounds, you're getting way more than if you just bought the 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 um, <laughs> the uh, the the masterclass on its own, right? So uh, yeah, that's also a way you can kind of start getting involved into our community because I actually have my own little small tiny Facebook with about three hundred people or so, or, or, or so in it, with our own groups where I'm kind of putting up these events that are going on as well. So. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. 
So if you're interested to join about finding out more about my women's program, if you're interested in joining, do use that Calendly link. Now, okay, I love the membership space. After, when is the next masterclass after the one starting next week? So the next masterclass is that one I just put up, right? But you, it shows you, even when you look at the page with the masterclass, you can either click pay 72 pounds or join the membership to get for free. And if you just click that, then that will take you straight onto the membership uh, and give you those options there. So, um, oh yeah, and then the giveaway. Oh yeah, someone had asked about this winner, but you should all have received an email. Has people received an email saying about this giveaway? Okay, great. Yes, people have got it anyways. Okay. Right, so send that there and I'm gonna try to check them on Saturday and get back to you on Saturday with a few of my lovely juicy resources. Uh, so some people already sent it. I'd love to just know the feedback from this, uh, from this uh, class. And by the way, if anybody wants to give me like a couple of sentence testimonial or a video testimonial about uh, the their experience today or any other experience that they've had with me, you're more than welcome to do so. It's always welcome. I mean, I've had people do the, do the one of, a, a lady did one of my master classes and she'd never had any internal orgasms before. And she had a G-spot and a K-spot orgasm just after like attending one of my master classes basically, which is a pretty cool like testimonial to put up, you know. Um, but obviously, like, you know, I love sharing with people about this. I love giving these resources. I love giving these activations. This is like a first step where we can start to see what it's all about. But if you're really interested to go deeply and get like the benefits out of it, then that is like either the membership program or something, because this stuff goes like so, so, so deep. And basically, if you can uh, really like, yeah, get into where that uh where that is that's when you really really start having like the powerful transformations happening and going on so thank you david i'm so glad that you uh did make it today david is going to replace me soon he's learning to be teacher <laughs> <laughs> he's going to be the male version of me i think there's going to be a few male versions of me which is super exciting that we're having like people now starting to train to teach this and create like various niches around around it so like specializing in certain aspects of it and spreading like our art of the bed chamber community really like around the whole um the whole world you know so yeah I feel like this whole evening has been like a really uh, <laughs> positive beautiful experience I actually had like a little accident a few days ago in my Muay Thai class <laughs> where I ended up experience getting a bit of a concussion but it was kind of my own fault you know but anyway so I've just been feeling a bit like and dizzy <laughs> this week but it's always nice to kind of especially like come together in a group with people and do the exercises like together in a group because it's so much more powerful what happens and what happens you know when we're doing this as a kind of like a group transmission because it's like we all come into this kind of like vortex and we all start getting activated and some people who even had like just these 15 minute consultations with me without even having signed up yet started having the activations already going on because all this stuff is like inside us but it's just the programming of society that's like sex negative that's like telling us you know that uh basically uh you know we should repress the sexual energy we should repress the anger that we should be scared to like show do you know what I mean? Whatever that we are and be what we are and just shine our light out into the world and that part that wants to like you know that part of people and part of humanity or not even humanity but part of society that sees people like glowing and wants to kind of put people down and bash people which is just coming from like an unbalanced state you know within someone so 
It's been really beautiful. I just want to give a last, last chance that if somebody wants to pop on and actually say hi and speak and ask a question, you may do so. I can say something. I always love your juiciness, your how fun you make it, and how clear every concept that you manage. So you're really a, a blessing into that appear into my life, and I'm really grateful for you. So thank you. It's been wonderful meeting you, David, and I feel like I say the same thing about everybody who's kind of come al come along right. and joined, you know, and and started learning this stuff because it's just so incredible when you know we start and obviously yeah it requires discipline it requires the fact that for me you know it was having a goal to actually sit down and start dedicating what you know for me I was putting three four hours a day into this stuff you know and uh basically uh it was just uh uh yeah I really got obviously that's an extreme amount of time to put into it you know you can put 10 minutes or half an hour a day and still get great results out of it but you know uh it's just a beautiful beautiful space when we start coming into it into it that's just it's like very different from you know even what what we see like very often like put on to us is sex positive and it's not to say look you know anyone has to show you know or or show or experience their sexuality in a certain way you know there were ancient Taoists who were highly promiscuous there were ancient Taoists who never had sex but even I think the ones that never had sex could still have sex or did still have sex many would care bond for life you don't find these things like kink you know in Taoism that's not to say people can't do them but I do just think that there's an uh, a tendency in this stuff you know especially when you see it getting promoted on like big like mainstream uh uh sex uh so sex coach uh, accounts on instagram promoting things like uh kink involving inflicting pain and domination onto women specifically you just think you know yeah sure enough if some people want to do that but a lot of people are seeing that and they don't even understand about consent and they're maybe seeing it in porn and you know there's a lot of actually like non-consensual sexual violence being committed against women. And I've even seen without the perpetrator even realizing what they're doing. And I even saw a statistic recently that a study has found that actually women are having 10% of women are having less orgasms. So in, I think 10 years ago, like 46% of women were having orgasms. Now that's gone down to like 36% of women are now reporting that they're having orgasms. I'm not sure on their own during sex or when exactly, but it just, there seems to be this actual big drop in women having orgasms, not an increase in it, you know? So uh, exactly, exactly. And and I do think like, you know, a lot of like the, the, the sex stuff that's pushed on us, it's really like anti-sex, like a lot of the so-called sex positive stuff. And I understand, look, you know, I've lived in the USA, so I understand the people in the USA, they grew up with a very different, you know, energy around sexuality than we do, like in a lot of parts of Europe. I mean, I'm in Portugal where there's definitely a lot of sexual oppression, which leads to a lot of sexual harassment and unhappiness. But, you know, I do understand why Americans are going, oh, let's be poly, let's do this kink, let's do this. And it all kind of is going down this really like, it's like a reaction against the repression. But if all we're doing is reacting against the repression, somehow we're still in that same energy field. But it's like when we come like right into the center and really, really look into, you know, not getting off on dominating another person or being dominated, but actually getting off on these amazing, beautiful feelings inside the body, whether this be massaging our G-spot or getting the G-spot massaged or smiling to our hearts and feeling the love inside of our hearts, you know. This is about like embodied pleasure. And this is the pleasure that like so many people are missing out on because their bodies are tense. Their bodies are like full of traumas. Their bodies are full of programming. And so this is why you see this like really fast, hard style of sex being so popularized because people just don't feel anything. Whereas when you actually tune in and you start to feel things, you really, really can just... Uh, start to just have incredible incredible pleasure just from very gentle very light touch in fact 
So thank you so much, David, for joining us. This is Spices, if somebody doesn't know, uh, if they haven't seen her yet. It's the boss of the house, she thinks. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm so glad to have connected with, in with everybody and I invite you to make sure you write to me to get your freebie. Uh, and <laughs> have an amazing, wonderful evening. Hopefully the dog doesn't eat me because it looks like she's on the path to doing that. <laughs> All right then, bye-bye.